Hello, in this video I want to go over a homework problem, exercise 59 from chapter 2, section 4. And I want to go over this to show you how to compute a p-value uh, using stat keys, a bootstrap randomization distribution feature. So in this problem we're going to test the hypothesis h naught that p, our population proportion, is 0.5. And the alternative hypothesis is that p, the population proportion, is greater than 0.5, 50%. And the data, the evidence that supports the alternative hypothesis is that we've got one sample um, of a p hat proportion, sample proportion of 30 over 50, at, which gives us a 0.6. So we have a sample size 50, 30 out of 50 uh, is our sample proportion. And since that 0.6 is greater than 0.5, this actually just makes sense to use this particular uh, alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to go to uh, stat key, and actually I'm just I'm going to go to stat key in the same browser I'm using. So I'll Google stat key, and for this problem, it gives us the hint. But we're in chapter four, and it says go to test for single proportion. So when you're in stat key again, this first column is chapter two. Second column goes with chapter three. And then this third column to the right is chapter four. So we're doing a test for a single proportion. So I'm going to click down on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is check the null hypothesis. It does say 0.5. So I didn't have to change that, but I want to make sure that null hypothesis matches up with the null hypothesis given in the problem. And then we need to enter the sample data. So we get 30 out of 50. So to do that, I'm going to click on the edit data button up here. Click edit with count in sample size. The count, that's the number of successes, is 30 out of 50, 60%. Click OK. We get our original sample here. And again, the goal is to figure out the p value. I want to get the p value. So to do that, I need to generate samples. I would suggest doing at least 2,000 samples. So we just did 2,000. Um, bootstrap samples. So all of these represent just a recounting of this original sample. And to get the p-value, once I got uh, you know, 2,000 or more bootstrap uh, distributions, distribution samples, we're looking at the alternative hypothesis that p is greater than 0.5, larger than 0.5. So in stat key, that is a right tail test. We're looking at greater than 0.5, so I want a right tail. And it's always going to cut off at the 95th percent, 95 percent above and below, or the middle 95 percent. But I don't want to use that. I want to change this bottom entry to the original sample data. So I'm going to click down here and change that cutoff to 0 0.6. It's 0.6 that comes from our original sample proportion. I'm going to click OK. And then this value up here, you know, 0 0.104. This is the p-value. So you enter your sample data, your sample statistic in the bottom, and then up here, this gives you the p-value. And again, one way to think about that, I'll, I'll go back to Wally Plus. So it was 0 0.104. Okay, so we, we show that this is 0 0.104. So one thing to note on this interpretation, if this null hypothesis is true, then the likelihood of getting the sample data that we did is about 10%, 10.4%. So let's interpret that p-value. And one other thing, if I were to run this again, this is not going to be a fixed number. This is not absolutely 10.4%, 0 0.104. Because if I were to go back over here and reset plot, make sure edit data is still 30 out of 50. Generate two more thousand, click on right tail. Bottom, change that to 0.6. I got 0.094. So I actually did this problem before making this video, and I had 0.096, and I entered it in the problem, got it correct. So you're not going to have you know the exact same number as your friends, or if you run through the simulation again, this p-value is not fixed. Um, but there should be a tolerance. There's a tolerance of 0 0.02, so it should be able to take a range. Just make sure to create at least 2,000 samples and change that bottom entry to your sample statistic. In this example, 
exercise, it was 0.6.